This work is a systematic review of effective gaming. I'm going to go somewhat fast through the slides, so feel free to pause or rewind if you miss something. So what is effective gaming? Effective games are those which use physiological signals to influence the gameplay experience. We looked at a variety of both direct and indirect physiological signals as part of the review. Direct physiological signals are ones which can be directly manipulated by a person. So for example, I can breathe and make a particular facial expression on command, which is why they're categorized as direct. And indirect signals are ones which are mediated by some other interaction. For example, to make myself sweat more, I need to do something else to make that happen, like jumping jacks, or to lower my heart rate, I might take a few deep breaths to calm myself down that in turn lowers my heart rate. The original research question was to understand if, how, and why using these physiological signals in games actually enhances player experience. However, after conducting the review, it turned out there was still a significant gap between research and evaluation. So the paper ended up giving an overview to newcomers in the field by creating a way to categorize and group the literature and understand how and why certain signals and sensors are being used more than others. We followed the PRISMA guidelines on conducting systematic reviews. You can read the method section of the paper for a more detailed account. We designed the effective game loop to classify the ways in which physiology can be mapped to in-game variables. First, you have a player. The player uses some form of physiological device as input to the game. Could be a sensor tracking the player's heart rate, or could be facial expressions via webcam. And this is fed into the game. The game then processes the sensor input, maps it to some in-game variable, and then feeds it back to the player. So this is the way which physiology can be integrated into the game experience, but we still need a way to describe a simple overlay of the player's physiology over the game without affecting it in any way. We call this physiological projection, which means the physiological signal is simply projected back to the player without entering the loop and affecting the game in any way. Now let's zoom in and understand the various ways in which the physiological signals can be mapped in game variables. So we can either have an input mapping that is mechanical, environmental, difficulty, or some combination of these three. A mechanical mapping is where the input is used to control game actions or mechanics, usually by the player character. Environmental mapping is where the input is used to affect mood or context of the game, like audio or visual effects, lighting or weather. Difficulty mappings are those where the input is used to influence the difficulty of the game, which might impact the non-player character's abilities, player abilities, or background context specifically relating to game difficulty. Mechanical mappings we classify as action-based and difficulty in environmental or context. So now let's bring it back to the effective game loop. We can have indirect and or directly controlled physiological signals which the player uses as input to the game. The game then takes this input and maps it to in-game variables which can either be action or context based and then this feedback is sent to the player. Physiological projection can be mapped to any signal in the form of visual, audio, or haptic feedback. An example of this might be an audio signal of the player's beating heart in the background of the game. So here's a simple example. This game is called Breath. Essentially, targets are placed along a curve on the screen and the player needs to blow into a breathing apparatus to move the bird up and down through inhaling and exhaling to collect the targets. So for this loop, we have the player using a spirometer, which is a direct physiological input, that's then fed into the game where it's mapped to the up-down movement of the bird, which is a mechanical or action-based mapping. In this graph, you can see each of the physiological signals and how often they were used as a particular input mapping in the literature. So for example, heart activity was most often used to affect difficulty in games, whereas breathing and facial expressions were mapped most often to game mechanics like player speed or movement. The trend we see with this graph is that more direct signals like breathing and facial expressions are paired with more mechanical in-game mappings, whereas more indirect ones like sweat and heart rate are most often paired with difficulty in environmental mappings. Taking a step back, we'll look at the paper usage of these signals irrespective of the effective game loop categories. This graph shows the raw number of systems which use each signal. We can see that heart rate was the most frequently used. This might be because heart rate monitors are cheaper and more widely available than other sensors, or maybe because the readability of these signals to the average player is higher than another indirect signal like sweat. The purpose of the contribution included anything from increasing player engagement to helping people with a specific issue like therapy games or serious games used to help with rehab. Half of papers were looking at general enjoyment. The mental health domain seemed quite promising as papers were generally focused on designing a game to help children with ADHD focus, increasing empathy in children with autism spectrum disorder, or people with anxiety helped them decrease their stress. Generally, the papers achieved the goal they set out to achieve. Only 10% of studies didn't achieve their desired outcome. To summarize, we made the effective game loop to help contextualize the field. The loop might be useful for newcomers to the field to understand which domain their work falls in, devices others have used, and how others map 
the physiological signals they use to in-game variables. Another purpose is to link up parts of the field that might not be communicating. So for example, those in the mental health domain publish at separate venues from those in the general engagement one, and this systematic review will help each field understand what work is being published in the other. Generally, researchers who have explored the topic have found success in using physiological input to enhance the player experience. However, formal evaluations are rare, suggesting that the field is still in its infancy. For the field to advance, it might be useful to have some gold standard physiological devices with built-in integration to game making platforms like Unity with customizability for particular purposes offered as well in order to speed up the initial making and testing of these devices. This paper is the first step to facilitate this, providing a launching point for researchers in this field to understand what has been done before to get a sense of how their work fits into the existing ecosystem of effective gaming.